stopped by my local card show recently and I have some thoughts. I've seen a lot of people do these videos about what they found at their local card shows and they show off the cards and I will do that in a second. I bought three cards, all raw cards, all from the same dealer. But there are some things that I wanted to touch on before I showed you the cards. Number one, the card show that I went to, which is in a suburb of Minneapolis, was sparsely attended. I would say it was probably the lowest attended card show that I've been at at this location for a while. They hold these monthly. A lot of the same dealers are at the show. So I'm wondering if people are just getting um, sick of seeing the same stuff. I know it's the fall. People have a lot of things going on. Kids are back to school. Activities are starting to ramp back up. So I'm going to give a little bit of credit to the low attendance to that rather than people are just losing interest in the hobby because I don't think that's the case at all. But the local card show that I went to was probably about one person deep on each table where normally it's about two or three. So um, something to keep in mind. Number two, and this is something that is being, uh, you know, I'm starting to see all over the hobby and Chris is as well, is... People are still pricing their cards like it was a year and a half, two years ago. And they haven't come down in their pricing and they're not willing to negotiate. So I have been calling this the La La Land pricing where you'll see a card that is easily $10 to $15 and people are selling it for $25 to $30. Um, I don't know if it's because they have that much money into it and they feel like they have to get that money back, but those cards are not selling and people are not willing to move on those. So um, I'm seeing this on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and in local card shops, as well as the show. So look out for La La Land pricing. I think there's uh, a lot of opportunities to buy at this point, but you gotta make sure you're spending the right amount of money on the right cards. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about, and it kind of brings me back to what I purchased, is what people are looking for right now. The card show that I specifically went to, they have a good variety of uh, graded cards, vintage cards, newer cards, um, not a lot of packs or, or, or boxes, but a um, lot of individual cards. And I started to kind of pay attention and listen to what people were talking about because there's a lot of people that bring their cards to the show to try and trade or sell to the dealers. And the conversations, uh, a couple of them struck me. Number one was a dealer asked the guy, let me see your cards. And he started and went through the cards and they're all graded cards. And, you know, they had a conversation and the guy with the card said, you know, what are you guys looking for? What are you, what are you selling? And, he, and, and the guy told him, he said, if you have vintage cards, whether it be basketball, football, baseball, PSA 8 or higher, those are the cards that seem to be selling right now and seem to be in demand. And he said more specifically basketball and, and, and then moved to football and then to baseball. I think baseball is probably the most graded vintage card, whereas basketball and football, there's still a market there to be uh, revealed or untapped, if you will. So he was looking for vintage cards, PSA 8 or above. So uh, I think that's pretty common with what I'm hearing from others as well. Uh, I know a lot of people are looking for vintage cards in good shape. That's one of Chris's plays right now. So that's kind of what I look for at this show as well. And so those were some of the findings that I had at the card show. And now I'm going to show you what I have and um, tell you the story behind these three cards. One of the first tables I stopped at had this Pete Maravich 1976 Topps Tallboy card. Now, I didn't know much about this card, but the one thing that I've been talking to Chris a lot about is vintage cards that are in good shape. And of course, I've heard of Pete Maravich, but uh, the vintage cards that are in good shape from 1976, this tall boy kind of fits that bill. Really good centering, solid corners, good edges, coloring is good, surface looked good, back looked good. Everything looked good about this card. But again, I had just got into the show. I didn't know if I was going to buy this card, so I walked away from it. I did some research on eBay and I thought, oh, okay, that card's selling for anywhere between $20 and $40. This card was being um, advertised for $30 at the uh, guy's table. And so I knew right there, I was like, okay, that's a good price. Then I looked up PSA 9s. Those sell for around, I'd say $250, $300. 
And I don't know if this is a nine. You sitting around 1976, probably not, but a PSA eight's around 118 to 125 dollars now, and they've gone up about 50 dollars in the last month. So I think vintage again, vintage PSA eights are starting to have a market that's starting to move into the more positive range. So I put this on my uh, my watch list. Walked around the rest of the show, didn't see much that I really wanted to spend my money on. So I went back, and the card was still there. Now he had a, a stack of about three or four other cards underneath these. He had a Rudy Tomjanovich and another card of another player I'd heard of, but they weren't as in good shape. So I said, okay, I like that card. $30 was his price. And so I started looking around and this goes back to what I was saying before, you know, dealers just not willing to negotiate. So I thought to myself, okay, I want this card for 30 bucks. Now what can I get as kind of a throw in to see if he'll come down in price? So then I found this card, and this card is something I've always wanted, and for some reason never bought it, never bought it, never owned it. Um, it's a 1990 Ken Griffey Jr. Leaf card. And for the life of me, I don't know why I never had this card, but my buddy had this card growing up and I always wanted it from him. He never would trade it for me, uh, trade it to me. Um, so I decided to make a deal on the 1990 Ken Griffey Jr. Leaf card. And he didn't have a price on it. So I said, what's your price on this? Beautifully centered, great corners, great surface. I think this has a potential to be a PSA 10. And so he said, I'll give it to you for seven bucks. Okay, so now I'm in for 37. Now the last card, big fan of Allen Iverson. When he came out of Georgetown, he was a guy who I really liked. So I got his 1996 Fleer Flare Showcase rookie card and this is a row two they have different rows and this one was eight dollars and so i said okay we have 37 8 45 bucks so you do it for 40 the guy said no 45 that's my final price and so i had a conversation with chris about this he said i would chris said i would have walked away well this is where i was a little bit more stubborn i said i'm not going to quibble over five bucks so at the end of the day, I really wanted this card. I thought I could get these two cards at a discount. I didn't. But when you look at all of the cards for $45, that's about on par with what you're going to pay on eBay with the fees. And I will tell you this, I will pay the extra 5 to $10, depending on the price of the card, to see them in person versus saving that money on eBay because you never know what you're going to get. So this was my card show find. I'm very pleased with this. So what is my strategy with all of these cards? I'm going to hold them until PSA lowers their price from $22 per card, 25, or 25 card minimum. There's no reason to, to get these cards graded right now. But... As a strategy, I am collecting especially vintage cards, older cards, not in the junk wax era, that I can hold on to and wait till PSA gets their, their, their mind right and gets their PSA order numbers uh, to a point where they have to lower the price of grading. And then I'm going to send these cards in to get graded. So this is my card show find, and I'm very pleased with this, $45 for all of these cards, all of them, I think, have potential to be PSA 9. PSA 8 here would be a big winner. Um, PSA 10, PSA 10, potentially. They'll probably be 9s. I'm a realist. But, you know, if this one can come back an 8, that's a nice card to have in an 8. I think it's always one of those cards that's going to be um, somebody's going to have interest in. So that's my card show musings of the day. Watch out for La La Land pricing. Watch out for people who don't want to negotiate. I will say, look for vintage. People are buying vintage. People are, you know, looking for vintage, especially basketball, especially football. And lastly, if you are going to card shows, make sure that you're, uh, you know, looking for the cards that you want to collect. I think that's where the hobby is right now, in the cards that you want to collect. Collect the people you want. I don't think there's a big market right now for flipping. So your best option right now is collect what you like to look at and collect cards that you think eventually you can get graded. That's my card show find. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.